Hey everyone, welcome back. Today I'm going to be going over week three of your spring detox. Congratulations, you made it this far. You are doing amazing. So let's finish out strong with one more week. And if you really wanna challenge yourself, two more weeks so you hit a full month. So in this video, I'm going to be going over how to successfully complete week three of your spring detox for the keep it simple version and the anti-inflammatory diet style of this spring detox. If you did the liver bowel cleanse version, congratulations, you are done. Feel free to continue watching this video, but otherwise rock on. I hope that you are feeling lighter and better in your own skin. All right, so just a quick review. We have our keep it simple spring detox without any supplements. It is very simple. You are avoiding all processed foods. You're avoiding alcohol. You're avoiding wheat, dairy, and eggs. The biggest thing to really look out for are those hidden sugars. So cane sugar, even natural sugars like honey, maple syrup, brown rice syrup, all those things you want to do your best to avoid or at least keep to a minimum. It can be really difficult to avoid a lot of these guys. They're hidden into a lot of different foods, even things like sushi. Then we have our anti-inflammatory diet style cleanse. So for this diet, you are avoiding pretty much all the same foods, so alcohol, all of the different sugars. You want to not only avoid wheat in this one, but all of the grains with the exception of rice. You also want to avoid beans and legumes, nightshades, dairy, eggs, red meat. I also generally recommend avoiding poultry at least for the first two weeks because poultry is very high in arachidonic acid. A reminder that the family of nightshades is a very odd group of foods and a lot of foods fall into nightshades that you might not expect. So we have tomatoes, white potatoes, eggplant, bell peppers, cayenne and paprika, okra, sorrel and goji berries, gooseberries, and I think that's all of them actually. So if you are doing the anti-inflammatory version of this cleanse, week three, I want to invite you to start to add back in a few foods. I recommend starting with the different proteins because it's very likely that you've had a hard time getting in a lot of protein following the anti-inflammatory diet. If you've eliminated pretty much all the proteins, you've eliminated beans and legumes, you were really limited to um, your vegetables for protein as well as nuts and seeds. All right, so the biggest thing for adding foods back in with the anti-inflammatory style cleanse, honestly, you can do this for all of them, but it's the most important for the anti-inflammatory style because realistically you chose this one because you wanted to really try to problem solve and reduce inflammation in your body. So we don't want to suddenly add a whole bunch of foods back in and then not know what suddenly caused a resurgence of symptoms, whether that be bloating or acid reflux, maybe you get headaches, maybe you notice you get depressed. That can be from certain foods. That doesn't necessarily happen just because of hormones and neurotransmitters. Foods can play a role in our mood. So the big thing with food reintroduction for this is to only reintroduce one new food per day. So if you have ever read the actual official anti-inflammatory diet, you know that after you do the four weeks of diet, you only reintroduce one new food every 72 hours. Because we're just doing a cleanse and we're keeping it a little bit more simplified for this at-home version of a detox, really without supplements, I mean, you could have used some protein powder or collagen powder, which is awesome, very helpful for the anti-inflammatory cleanse, but you didn't need to do that for this version. So one new food every day. The biggest thing here is really to be watching out for adverse reactions. And that can be something minor and that can be something major. Obviously, if it's something major, you want to weigh out how major is that. Ideally, you aren't eating any foods that you know that you have a severe reaction to. I do not recommend that under any circumstance. But maybe you eat a food and you notice that you get immediate bloating from that or an upset stomach. Maybe you eat a food and you notice that your skin starts to get a little bit itchy later in the day. Those are all symptoms of either an allergy or a sensitivity, and it can be either. 
So if it's a sensitivity, it means that you might get over that at some point, but you probably need to avoid that food for a period of time. So bringing this back full circle, one new food every 24 hours, if you have a bad reaction to a food, you do not re-eat that food, at least not right now, okay? Wait until that reaction is mostly resolved, so a day or two, up to three days, and then you can try in another new food, but don't reintroduce that food that caused a reaction. We don't want to cause more inflammation in the body as we are trying to reintroduce new foods. So as long as you aren't having any sort of negative reaction, you can continue to add in one new food per day. So don't go out and eat a pizza, wait, slowly reintroduce, maybe have tomatoes one day. The office phone rings a lot. So try tomatoes one day in their whole form. And then another day you could try white potatoes or bell peppers. Another day, try some spices. Okay, if you're following the simple cleanse, just continue on that for one more week. And then after you finish out that third week, then reintroduce those few foods that you had eliminated. And again, similar to anti-inflammatory, only reintroduce one new food each day, but you're gonna get back all of those foods pretty quickly in your diet. The big thing is gonna be sugar, don't go crazy. Reintroducing um, sugars back into your diet. Try to keep it minimal. So goals when it comes to foods rich in fiber and antioxidants, all of those anti-disease fighting agents that we get in our plant foods, for both the simple cleanse and the anti-inflammatory style, ideally you're eating at least six cups of plants as food per day. So with the anti-inflammatory, you've been grain-free, bean and legume-free. So those aren't counting as your plants. So you're really getting all this from fruits and vegetables. As you start to reintroduce beans and legumes and different grains back into your diet, you can count that towards your six, but ideally you're working your way up to eight cups a day of plants as food. If you're following the simple cleanse, you're already getting some of these cups a day as grains most likely. And I want to encourage you to make sure that at least four cups are fruits and vegetables with no more than one full cup actually being from fruit. Um, the other big thing with fruit is that fruit is high in fructose and that is sugar. Fruits vary significantly in sugar content. And it's really important to remember that when you are watching your sugars. So for example, a mango contains about 46 grams of sugar. A medium sized gala apple contains about 10 to 11 grams of sugar and about two grams of fiber. One cup of blueberries contains about 14 grams of sugar total, so a little bit more, but it also doubles the amount of fiber. It contains a little over four grams of fiber in that cup of blueberries. And of course, wild blueberries are even better than cultivated blueberries. They're gonna be much richer in antioxidants and the vitamins and mineral content. So really watch out what fruits and vegetables you are choosing because they make a really major impact on basic nutrients in terms of vitamins, minerals, sugar, and fiber that you're eating every day. So make sure that you're keeping it to low sugar fruits for the majority of time. All right, you've gotten this far. I think you're good. You don't need the daily menus, but I am gonna give you a few more new recipes. The daily menus, you can go back and look at week one and week two and repeat those or just swap out certain foods. But just along those same guidelines, you're not following anything specific day to day like the liver bowel cleanse. You're just avoiding those foods that are more inflammatory. So here are some new recipes for you to try out this week and in the future if you enjoy them. They continue to avoid the most inflammatory foods for both the keep it simple as well as the anti-inflammatory diet. However, at this point, if you're following the anti-inflammatory diet, you can start to add back in new proteins into a lot of these. And you'll even see in some of these that there might be some bell pepper or tomatoes, just to give you some ideas as you start to reintroduce new foods. All right, and lastly, let's talk about all of the wonderful activities that you are doing every day to promote detoxification in 
your body. So we're focused on our lymphatic system, we're focused on our skin, we're focused on our lungs, on our liver and intestines for digestive tract and our kidneys. So for all these things, we wanna be making sure that we're drinking enough water to help with filtration and to help get stuff out of the system. Drinking enough water helps with both kidney elimination as well as with intestines. It also actually helps with blood flow the big thing with blood flow and lymphatic flow is that we want to make sure that we have enough minerals to help balance out the amount of fluid that our blood can absorb. So if you find that as you've tried to increase your water intake and you just keep peeing more and more frequently, instead of just drinking filtered water, add some minerals or electrolytes to that water. It, oftentimes it will help the body retain that water. We also are ending all of our showers on cold water. This also helps to move the blood and the lymph. It's also really great for our skin. The cold water helps to close up the pores so that when you get out of the shower, your skin is less likely to feel dry and itchy from the hot water. And it's also going to reduce debris that can get into your pores. If you have a sauna or ice bath or access to either of these, you are using those as well. Remember about four days a week, you can be using these like every other day or every day for a few days. You've been slowly increasing your time that you're spending in each of these if you're doing them. And just important to remember that you're still always ending on cold. So even if you're going into the sauna, you wanna step out into a cool air temperature afterwards or take a shower and still end with cold. Same for the ice bath. Even though it's an ice bath, we basically wanna end on that. It can be a little bit difficult too. You're just bundling up in a warm towel or a warm coat afterwards. So nothing hot and wet. You can still wrap yourself in something warm after the ice bath. We are focused on our lungs and our breathing. So we are meditating and doing breathing exercises every day. You don't have to meditate, but I do generally recommend it. It's great for just like a grounding, solidifying, just helping to root your nervous system in more of a parasympathetic mode versus sympathetic. Sympathetic is our fight or flight versus parasympathetic, which is rest and digest. And most of us do not spend enough time in parasympathetic. So we're really just focusing on nurturing that. So any sort of breathing exercises that you have enjoyed doing, box breathing, alternate nostril breathing, different breathing exercises that go along with your yoga routine, whatever it is, so long as it is promoting sympathetic nervous system tonifying, it is going to be positive. Getting out into nature is great too. You're getting more negative ions if you are going out towards the beach or mountains into the forest, things like that, versus just walking around in a city area. All right, your exercise. You're increasing your protein intake. You're adding in new foods. Make sure that you are exercising. If you haven't already increased the amount of exercise that you're doing, try to increase the exercise that you're doing. See what your recovery is like after you go for a little bit more time or maybe you up the intensity instead. I recommend doing one or either, not both at the same time. Because if it is a little bit too stressful for your system and you increase both the time and the intensity, it might be a really difficult recovery. And we don't want you to spend too much time in recovery because if you're having trouble with recovery from workouts, that is something that you wanna go and talk to your doctor about because there could be something else underlying with that. Remember to do your dry skin brushing. Remember this is dry skin brushing. You wanna do it on dry skin. You don't wanna do it after you've been in the bath or the shower or something like that. And you always wanna use those brush strokes going towards the heart. So just left side of the sternum or just to the sternum center is totally fine. We wanna do that with our extremities working in and we also wanna do that with our legs working up and ideally up over the torso. So if you can do that once a day, just spend a few minutes there doing that really helps to move the lymph, which helps the body detoxify. Dry skin brushing is also great. It just helps to remove dead skin cells on the, surf on the surface of the skin. It can help our skin just look a little bit younger and more refreshed. The other thing is dry skin brushing does actually help to reduce cellulite. So you do have to do this pretty routinely for this purpose, but there is a lot of great research showing that it is an effective tool to help reduce. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this spring detox journey. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you are feeling good about yourself, both physically and mentally. If you have any questions during this process, please feel free to drop a comment below. I have just completed the three weeks myself and am feeling a bit lighter and noticed that I felt less bloated on a day-to-day -day basis, which was awesome. Um, I did completely grain-free with the exception of rice, just hint, hint. I think that's what did it for me. And I hope that moving forward as you reintroduce those foods that you have a positive experience if you notice any foods that are causing trouble for you that you avoid those you can always go and check in with your doctor to get tested to see if you actually have a food sensitivity or allergy allergies are ige on food testing and sensitivities are igg or iga IgG is more of a general sensitivity where a reaction can happen anywhere in the body versus IgA, which is really localized to the gastrointestinal tract. So mouth, throat, stomach, intestines, anus. And hopefully you don't experience anything negative, but if you do, you get an answer to something, which is always wonderful. Well, I hope that you are feeling lighter and brighter after your spring detox and that it is a great way to enter summer. I'll see you next time on The Medical Madam.